everybody. Uh, right, I have with me Tony. We're sitting down just to be genteel, really. But uh, yeah, there is a backstory to it. But I, I find it quite oh, civilized. No, no, your your uh, privileges are. Uh, we're, we're down here. Uh, so yeah, we we just started a conversation off camera. So we're just going to recount very briefly what we went through, and then we're going to go from there and see if I can convince Tony of the truth of Christianity. Really. Yes. Discussion well, no, that's my aim, but we can discuss anything you like. Okay. I thought, to recap, sure. I'm trying to pitch that Christianity and Islam have got certain key common denominators, and that as well as you guys having to go with each other about your differences, there'd be some advantage in spending some of your time looking at your similarities. And I'm bigging up Christianity because what I really love about it is it's only got two commandments, so it distills the whole thing down from the Old Testament 600 and whatever it is, yeah? It's nice and simple, anyone can understand it. Your first one is love God, which is the same as in Islam. That's their primary commandment, yeah? And I know you'll argue you're talking about a different conception of God, but as a broad stroke statement, your, your, your primary commandment is actually identical. There's, your secondary commandment is love thy neighbor as thyself which is the golden rule. Now my understanding, including from a Christian priest and so on, is the golden rule is common to about 12 other religions, including Islam. And if you look it up, okay, only on Wikipedia for now, but I'll dig deeper. I'll give you you'll some find, references. You, yeah, that's my reference for now. But I've heard it consistently enough, I believed it. If you want to cast doubt on it, I'll check it deeper. But I believe that if we ask a Muslim, you'll find that they do have some respect for the golden rule. So a core element, both religions have some common ground. So I'm just arguing if you spend some of your time dwelling on your commonalities, just to further your understanding of your own religions and to deal with the atheists and the postmodernists, my real beef is with the postmodernists, okay? And I can even sympathize with them to some degree. But as I said to, I think Mohammed Hijab only once, I've only spoken to him once, I said, we've got a lot in common, Christians, Muslims, Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, people who are apparent enemies. Actually, we all believe in a priori human nature and absolute moral values. So to spend our entire time kicking the hell out of each other seems counterproductive. I'm going to pause you because I've Sorry, got two... No, long. no, that's fine. I've got too many points to sort of counter or clarify. So in terms... Right, we'll start with the golden... Well, we'll start with the commonalities. So monotheism is, of course, a feature of Islam as well as Christianity. Yes. However... Uh, sorry to burst your bubble. Um, the Bible says that the father of liars is Satan. He's referenced as a god with a lower ca case G of this system. Um, and Allah claims to be the best of deceivers, which if with a, just a tiny bit of extrapolation, you would assume that the father of lies would be the best deceiver. So th their god, whilst uh, fallaciously claiming to be Yahweh, i.e. the god of Christianity, um, is at the same time claiming titles that properly belong to Satan. So that's the monotheism out of the way. You can monotheism. So if you think that persuades me against monotheism. No, 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 not at all. I would hope not because monotheism is the correct position of a like spiritual yeah, position I of a human. Monotheism what I'm saying yeah. is when we dwell on our um, commonalities, they are commonalities only philosophically. They're not that we don't worship the same God. Muslims will happily accept that. And, and well, even though. I argue that maybe both of you are slightly misconstrued. Religion. You might, but you don't have a religion no, to be arguing no, from. No, I do. I, I think each of us has got their particular faith, and my faith tells me that that may be hopefully what's happening here. But sorry, what is happening here? That a number of religions are failing to appreciate their value and taking themselves by taking themselves so dogmatically literally, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Okay, let's. We're, we're going to put that put a place marker there. So, what else were you saying? The golden rule. So in terms of treating others like the second of Christ's commandment, this, this is the follow-up to, to what he said. He said, love, the, love your neighbour as yourself. And then in those same verses it says, because um, love covers a multitude of sins and, those, and, and in that word, i.e. that statement, love your neighbour as yourself, it doesn't mention enemies, love your neighbour as yourself, you encompass the entirety of the law, the 613 yeah. that you spoke of. However, again, I'm not saying the priest is in error, um, the Catholic priest, I guess, who you spoke to. No, um, Well, then he was a vicar. She. Uh, she, she was most definitely a vicar then, because uh, there are no female Catholic uh, priests. So anyway, back, back at the ranch, um, Islam 
are not in any way commanded to love their enemies. So as, as we are told, love your neighbour, your neighbour could be an enemy. Like, it, it, you're, not, you're your own enemy in our world view. Like, we are okay. sinful and fallen. And that, so the, the, the Quranic, because I know you, you knew about, you know of some hadith. a tiny bit on that. Yeah, so the Quran says, fight the unbeliever. Anyone who does not believe in Allah and the last day and the religion. Similarly to Catholicism, maybe, when they say, let me finish, when they say anyone outside of this faith, is anathema is not saved yeah. islam says anyone who does not believe in what we believe fight them because also allah says he guides who he guides and he misguides that's another role of satan who he misguides and he even tells muslims don't bother trying don't try and guide people i've misguided because who are you basically so there's no feed the poor as in non-believing poor there is fight slay subjugate uh Dimitude, like as in demand money with menaces. Uh -huh. um, and then the golden rule for Christianity is feed the poor and the widows. And it doesn't matter what religion they are because they'll always be with us. Pray for those who curse you and despitefully use you and bless those, you know, who hate you. And always counter sin with love. Like don't ever hate for hate, you know, because it says in the Old Testament, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Christ is expanding. He's saying, no, 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 love your neighbour. Um, Titanic, yeah, roughly, yeah, in, uh, yeah. One of the first five books. Yes, Deuteronomy, I think. He actually says, hate your enemy. Yes, because Christ says, you have heard it said, and whenever he says that, he's referring to the scripture. You've heard it said, love your uh, neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say, love your neighbour and and love your enemy alike. So that's that's a goal. that's why the, this the golden rule, as it were, is not uh, old, okay. old testament. So if, if, I said, mean, I can at this point go, sorry, Kay, you're right, I'm wrong, and leave. I could do that. Should I do that? Don't do that. Let's go on to a different topic. No, 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 let's not. Because, okay. I mean, you're just totally persuaded by your position. There's no flexibility. Well, no, on I it. Uh, theologically that's sound. Okay. I mean, in terms. And also, my you said at the beginning, my knowledge of Islam you only is mean pretty. That, you said you only mean that philosophically in terms of similarity. You yes. don't mean it in terms yes, of Yes, because right. monotheism is like a philosophical standpoint. Agreed. One now, God doesn't mean the same God, that's okay, my now, point. So the fact that you headed straight into text and said, because yeah, the but Bible that's just is philosophy, you see, so you seem to be placing the text above philosophy. I weigh yes. philosophy higher than text. Well, I'm studying, like at the moment, metaphysics and uh, other branches of philosophy. Yeah. And, the, and the problematics there, I find, is that um, you know, I don't know, like Socr Socratic uh, argumentation about the truth. The truth can only be philosophically contained in statements of belief or those beliefs. Like, that's it. There's no objective truth for that philosophy. I mean, I can There's argue no objective against it. truth, well, according to Aristotle. Aristotle says Aristotle that... Aristotle definitely would have been in favour of objective truth. Socrates, sorry, that's who I said. Socrates. I Socrates. And that was held to the 60s to be a valid position. Just a. Uh, by some people, but not. No, 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 not by some people, by propositional calculus. It was provable. It, like, propositional calculus is you get the two premises and the conclusion, yeah. then you uh, translate them into uh, figures, basically, yeah, so and you do it. You do a, an equation, a mathematical equation, and if yeah. uh, and you disprove yeah. or prove the case. So it was proven. Doesn't mean it's true. It was you, valid. I know you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That, but but what, I can why disprove. Why are we having it. to defend Socrates? I'm not. I'm attacking him. I'm saying that my scripture is supreme to philosophy because my scripture is an unchanging truth. Oh, but philosophy. You're just picking a philosopher. Philosophy. Exactly. Is There's no air, unified is philosophy. A dimension which exactly. inevitably exists in numerous aspects of life exactly. and particularly in religion. I am saying in a Effect. it's either wholly right or wholly wrong no. whereas philosophy you can hold a some philosophy and I can argue philosophically and we can both be valid but there's only one no, truth philosophically I disagree with that I think the point of I believe in absolute truth I believe in absolute morality and which philosophy which not, philosophical school do you go to for that quite a few of them I mean as I said Kabbalism I'm a fan of it's um, not really a philosophy it's an esoteric well, kind of. what, the, what I found to be really beautiful about Kabbalism was it seemed to synthesize a lot of the world's religions because my initial problem was I was raised Christian and my, the, the topic I was going to discuss, a specific topic with you apart from trying to get you to be a bit sure. friendlier to the Muslims. I am be, friendly. I, I wouldn't get death threats. I don't mean personally. If I, no, no. If I didn't love Muslims, I, mean, I wouldn't accept threats and hatred. I get it. I mean ideologically. I mean yeah, I can't be, I'm afraid, because it's Satan worship. 
Yeah, because you and they are both entrenched in the literalism of your text. Let's put it this way. If the Quran is true, the Quran is false. There's some philosophy for you. The Quran says that it attests to the Bible. It confirms the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible uh, negates the Quran. So if the Quran is true about the Bible, and the Bible is, is therefore true by extension about the Quran, the yeah. Quran has to lose. Yeah, you do. If I'm coming at these things going, look, these books are not the literal syllabic truth. Yes, mm. they. I look. Yeah, at there's them, a deeper truth in them, but on I the look surface, at it like they're still true. For gold. Yep. Okay, I've used this metaphor a lot. So I come to religion. Most of the people who meet, I think, are attacking religion. You call atheists. They just want to chuck the whole thing out. Oh sure. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I see it as panning for gold. Inevitably, I'm going to find some dirt in it. I'm, that doesn't surprise me or put me off looking for gold. Yeah? So that's where sticking with scripture is a more profitable um, endeavour because, wait, because um, it's the exegesis that will be, is where the dirt will be contained. As Christians, we believe that the scripture is God-breathed and therefore profitable for this, that, the other, teaching, rebu rebuking, reproof, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but and, and yet the exegesis of potentially the KKK or, you know, other yeah. uh, people who claim the Bible, Jehovah's Witnesses even, yeah. like, their, it's their, what, their takeaway that's in error, not the scripture. If, if the individual texts, if the rock-solid texts of both of your religions and other more fundamentalist religions and political ideologies didn't contain so many internal... I don't say there's no truth in Islam, by the okay, way. Good, good. Hey, great, tell me more. What truth do you think there might be in Islam? Oh, that there is one God. Okay. That's the truth. Um, I mean, I put it to you that the five pillars, prescriptively, are a good idea, just from a psychological... Where did you get your pro-Islam stance? Do you believe it's like a left-wing education no, thing? No, I came or? with a genuine feeling that the world, as Nietzsche said, God is dead, yeah? Yes. I, I, I'm agreeing with your statement okay, that and then you made that. the statement, but Nietzsche died first. I oh, said. exactly. God won. Okay, Nietzsche yeah, yeah, I don't zero. Think, I don't think... I'm a fan of Jordan Peterson, for example. I love yeah. Jordan Peterson. Okay, he's veering like to Christianity quite yeah, strongly. Is. Good for him. Yeah, exactly. but he's not doing Good it for his eternal soul. Good for him. Um, <laughs> exactly. He's not doing it to the exclusion of all other religions. He does denounce Islam. No, nope, he doesn't. He actually does. I'll show you the video afterwards. Okay, I'll show and I'll you the, the video in the description. I've done a lot of Jordan Peterson, okay? Yeah. I'll show you Jordan Peterson very clearly going, look, I need to understand more about Islam before I can fully crit it. Sure. He has critted it on several levels that I probably crit it on as well. But in the interest of not trying to throw out the baby with the bath water and look for the gold, you said you saw some good stuff. Yeah? Yes. I would argue the five pillars are pretty morally solvent. All right, I'm going to go through them. So zakat is fine. Which, as it, sorry, I don't it, know the name. Yeah, so donating money to the... To the poor. Well, not to the poor. That zakat is for other Muslims, but that's fine. Like, I don't say that's in any way prejudicial because... Well, pound for pound, that's more of a plus than a negative. Yeah? Sure. Okay, yes, it if, means that you've got to be a bit selfless. Yes, that's fine. You've got to be a However, perfect. however, yeah. the Quranic verses that say... Um, to uh, you know, to basically to pressurise, uh, I'll get the the verse will flash up on the screen. Um, that when they submit to Allah, then their possessions are sacred to us. And if they kill the way we kill, and if they pray the way we pray, we will then leave their property alone because they were caravan robbers, um, like Muhammad was a, a bandit, basically. So yes, it's brilliant to have charity as a pillar. Sorry, but if you um, advocate or um, you know condone theft and murder and rape also which yeah. it does then i'm going to go it's nice but it, it's not the, the whole cigar then so that's that cat hodge is Hang on, can I respond sorry yes sure okay fine i said we were looking for the good stuff you you've did now, you've now but i'm going to tear it apart because that's my job and found the, my overall criticism of both religions and others show me the bible telling me to rape somebody no but i don't take this to be de facto literal syllabic you can what, like spiritually rape someone or, no, 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 or no. cut off their hands If somebody says to me that it says this in my book, to me, don't take this wrong, but to an extent, it's like watching like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter fans arguing about their text. Not at all. I think that's absolutely erroneous. I think that if a, if a scripture that a billion plus With, people wait, a billion plus people hold to be divinely inspired yeah. and true, and it says cut them from cut their arm off of their hair and their leg off here or crucify them or yeah. subjugate them or slay them where you find them, smite them in the neck. I think those Muslims are justified in saying that that is a literal command. Yes. And when the Bible right. tells us to love with the golden rule, that is a literal right. command. Right. It doesn't mean think nice no, things I in think your heart. If you're a Muslim, you're entitled to 
quote that bit of text at me and I'm entitled to come back at you and go, mate, your religion, we need to pan for the gold, clearly that particular bit ain't the gold. How about we consider recontextualising it, downplaying it or even chucking it You'd out? You'd be beheaded? Well, I don't think I'd be beheaded. I think you I, would if you were in a Sharia okay, no, I think um, very reasonable discussions here with... Oh no, here, okay. that's fine, yeah, this okay, is fine. the West. And a lot of other Muslims who you can have a lot of respect for. Um, I don't and disrespect I, I put, it, I put exactly the same point to levels of your text. So what do you offer. find contentious in the Bible? What do you think Hang is on, the we thing that leads... five, just quickly. No, I'm just... just the, the, what, I'll, I'll come back to them, yeah. Like negative... I, I start with philosophy. So when I look at reality, I look for self-consistency, yes? And I think everybody does. It's not a deep philosophical idea. In your friends, in life yes. in general, when something is self-contradictory, you go... The law of non-contradiction. Right, okay? yep. So we all instinctively see... Internal contradiction, yes. internal agreement, yeah. Cognitive dissonance. Non, yeah, non-cognitive dissonance, and we apply that across all aspects of life, including the religions when we're shopping for them, which to an extent we are. Okay? Sure. So when I look at Islam and I look at Christianity, certain key internal contradictions seem obvious. Yes. But what do you find contentious about Christian scripture in the same I vein as that, behead people okay, and? Okay. But, so we only got the first of the good Muslim things, but we'll we're going to get back no, to them. We'll, I we'll promise. Them. Okay. The, I don't see everything in the Bible, all of the laws and all of the insights, as having equal merit. I think they some, haven't even in the Bible. Right. No. Okay. So we have For a hierarchy. So we have a hierarchy of insights. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. At the near the top of that tree. Do everything. not murder. Right. Something like do not murder. Is. Right. Is more important than don't eat pork or something. Exactly, yes, because of Mark chapter So we seven. agree we have a hierarchy yes. here of moral prescription. Yeah? Yes. Okay. But not for the Jews. For the Jews, it's still standing. But for Christians, the entirety of the Old Testament is attestation of Yahweh's yeah. character. But we are not. We do not. We are not under that covenant. Well, so we well, don't hopefully, have to... I'm talking common denominators here for Judaism and Christianity sure. and Islam. They all have hierarchies and moral prescription. Yeah? Yes. Okay. With regard to Christianity, and I hope the others. Pretty much at the top of the tree, I see the idea that God is essentially a benign, caring, loving, just figure. I would, I would contend benign, but the other three I would agree with. Which are what? What are we agreeing on? He's just. He's perfectly moral. He's. I can't remember your other one now. Um, Sorry, about that. I said that. Sorry. Yes, it's just because uh, I think benign was. was no, benign is the one I would discount, and then you said. I would say I think, that if you're just and you're caring. He's wrathful and he's jealous. Okay, but he, if he's just and he's caring, okay, because you see him as wrathful and jealous. He's he's being just uh, when he remits our sins because of the outrage that the sins have caused. He he burns with anger against Israel in the Old Testament. He's right. not. A, he can't be perfectly just if there is no justice in terms of we haven't committed any crime. Like, what's the good of being a judge if everybody's law-abiding? Uh, you hang know. On, hang on. Hang on. There's a, there's judgment is one thing, and I'm all in favour of judgment. The sentence is quite another. Okay. Sure. Oh, do you say that eternity in hell is like out that of is whack? Where, that is where we were going to go. This is where oh, I went with, I've when got I discussed it with that. Ali. Um, got his name. Darwa. Thank Diva. you, Darwa, who was nice and I got on. Ali, I put the same point. The point being that in Islam, it seems that you get infinite punishment for finite transgression. Yeah? Right. Can I ask? And this will correlate with notions of um, predeterminism as well, well and yep. incompatible view of God. But we should backtrack to where we were because your view of Je I was pitching to you that I see God and Jesus as being essentially benign figures, and that's encapsulated in. The two commandments. They both seem yeah, it's to not be benign. Very... Loving your enemy is very hard. I'm you not, no, you as a I'm human being would know that. Isn't. It's very altruistic and loving. utilitarian. It's loving. It's not utilitarian, but okay. Let me well, count. It is because it's for the greater good. It's for everybody. No, it's, it's not. Saying, it's for the good of the... no, 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 no. It's for the good of the person uh, who's doing the loving. I get that. The but benefit. That's a deeper. I right. agree, happen to agree with let that. Let me count. Uh, what were you saying? But the way it's expressed is in a utilitarian framework. Yes, it's saying. All people have souls, all souls are equal, treat yes. people accordingly with equal respect and love. To me, that is broadly a benign utilitarian... I understand, I disagree. Yes? Um, I, I understand your reasoning, but I disagree. But I wanted to come back to something prior to that that I was about to counter. Shucks! If not, I'll drop my argument in the description box. Can't think what you were we saying can now. Pause it and yeah, no, no, that's fine. So, in terms of benign, um, so we are told explicitly. That. I mean, even Jesus um, is moved to righteous anger in the temple when he overturns the tables of the money lenders, yeah, for example. Sure. Well, that's hardly indicative of his main kind of mission statement. 
everything about his mission, his mission says, statement God is... God so loved the world that he gave his only son. There's a great sense of love for his creation. Yes, and yes. love is not a hallmark moment. Love does not mean approval or liking or affection even. Love in this sense is the love of a father for his children. And I've said it before, if my daughter became a murderer, for one, I wouldn't necessarily care about the victim at that stage because I don't know them. I still love my daughter and I'm now horrified. So that was it. So eternal hell. So this is my answer. And because yeah. because Matthew does say that it's an eternal punishment. Be in their answer, by the way. Go on. Um, okay, this is this is my answer for that. If we see this as out of uh, balance and a, and a bit of an overreaction, it's because we don't <laughs> it's, it's because we don't fully appreciate the gravity and the outrage and the uh, you know uh, and what sin is to God. God detests and abhors sin, and yet He loves us perfectly, even whilst we are yet sinners. He died for us, so He hates it with a passion, with a burning passion. Yes, yes. Yes, he hates exactly. sin. These are the things he hates. Lying I'm, I'm lips. I'm really more interested in trying to dwell on some positives a bit. I understand, but that's the, the liberal religion, part of the you. More religion, yeah, but a bit of balance. The more religion seems keen to move to the level of, here's what I'm we try- hate, here's what we no, hate. No, 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 I, no, I don't hate those no, things. So God you, hates those in things. Your opinion, it's a conclusion you've it's drawn not my opinion. No, it it's isn't. explicitly in the scripture. No, it's, your, it's, your inter- it's your opinion. No. It's literally the words are written. Okay, These are the okay, things I okay. hate. If you're, if you're studying I'm going to bring the verse up. If you're studying no, I'm, I'm a theologian. All of these are, are opinions. I'm not saying your opinion is wrong. It may be right. Excellent. No, it's but not my opinion. Opinions. Nope. A computer, if I typed no, in the me. words, could tell me them back paraphrased. Okay, 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 okay. It's a fact. It's written in that book. Yes. It's your opinion. The book is valid. You must be familiar with that basic. I am, I okay, am. It's valid and it's therefore, true. Therefore, the opinion which you're expressing, although you're reciting it from there, is. I'm your using opinion. that as my primary right, source. But, it is yeah. your opinion. but it's now, not my opinion no, that it says that. No, it's not your opinion. It, it does says say it. that. Let's be exactly. clear and not, you know, confuse yeah, But I'm anybody. not a philosopher, I'm it a theologian. Your opinion. This is my opinion. This is the you opinion may... of the Church of Centuries. Okay, it's yeah. the opinion of the Church, and it may be right or it may be wrong. It's an opinion. <laughs> it it's has an... to be right, but based on my worldview. Yeah, I, I get that you're 100% committed to this. I'm yes. just saying, in fairness to the process of philosophical discourse, sure. can we concur that these are both our opinions? And that's not to say they're not... I'll remain opinions. silent, but I'm... Yeah? I, I, I understand what you're saying. Thank you. Okay, just that. Carry on. Well, well, because well. you said philosophy or uh, scripture, and I stand on the scripture. I, un- I so understand. So philosophical. Uh, I'm just, like, but we also agree that there's a hierarchy of prescriptions within the religion. Yes, but there's a hierarchy of prescriptiveness in Nazism. There's a hierarchy of prescriptiveness in all ideological worldviews. I was going to use that idea. As commonality. Saying, it seems to me, and you, I know you won't agree with this, but to an extent, I'm giving it to your viewers sure. to look at. To an extent, maybe you'd look at it, and I put it to the Islamists as well. That, in order to save the top-notch stuff in the prescriptive hierarchy, the stuff that seems really important, yeah, it might be necessary to work out the lower-grade stuff and recontextualize it a bit. Now, because both you guys want to take everything so literally, you're not willing to do that as far as I can see, and that strikes me as slightly tragic, because to me, it's rather like when it was discovered that the earth goes around the sun rather than the sun around the earth, yeah? Because the church had been teaching for centuries. Not from the Bible. I know they hadn't, but because the church, people people came to believe that their Christian faith was fundamentally tied to the nature of the idea of an earth-centric cosmos, yeah? And they they put they dug their feet in. But the body of Christ at that time didn't have access to the scripture themselves, Und- only the clergy. Understood, but it's the psychology I'm drawing attention to. Mm-hmm. The Christians of that day, because I think yeah, they were trying to hang damaged. on to the gold in Christianity, yes. when confronted with something which was actually the remit of science, not religion, because they'd been taught to entangle the two so literally, they couldn't let go, they dug back, they burnt people at the stake, they intimidated people who now we look back on and go... Not, not scripturally based, though, no, again, agree, those punishments. You're completely correct. Are they you were, aware of Ibn Wahhab, you know, Wahhabism? I've heard of Wahhabism. Okay, so there was a movement to reform Islam. So my overall point is that if you strip back Christianity, I would say that's fallacious, by the way, to keep the good stuff and to recontextualize. However, if I went with that, I would say if you stripped, if you were an extremist Christian, you would be very loving and very feeding of the poor and very forgiving and, you know, whereas if you, like, Wahhab reformed Islam and yet made it more uh, strictly um, interpreted, 
interpreted literally, yeah. like as in so the violence and the you know the hatred basically. I assume like, they've got that stuff wrong. That's just my assumption. Is they've got it wrong, but I, as I said, I can't help noticing their prescriptions, their core prescriptions, which I take to include the golden rule. We'll come back to it. And I Christianity's core prescriptions are both good news. Yeah, you still and, haven't given me anything in the scripture that you say should be thrown out, like Christian well, no, scripture. Well, no, I'm saying the inconsistency of the concept of hell, for example, and eternal so retribution. So what inconsistency is, is God's reaction to sin? That's where I deviated off. Yeah, yeah you were distracted. Because I take God to be good, and then you you pointed out how angry and hateful God he was. God is perfect, and he is, he is the epitome of goodness. However, are you a parent, do you mind me asking? No. Okay, I am. So good for my child might not be good in their opinion at that time. Agreed. When I send them to bed early, yeah. uh, you know, they feel outraged. They're like, a, you know, I can't believe my I'm life has come to this. Lo love means always treating people nicely. Yes. I am suggesting okay, well, that's my that argument. But God has got hate. Hate. Uh, I I, I've got to say, I couldn't describe to the idea that God would ever need an emotion as low based as hate. Well, he does. It's in the Bible. So, yeah. Okay. Yep, got, well, sure. I, I would suggest maybe that's this is the, off the top of my head it's these are the these are these are the six things I hate and lo the seventh is an abomination unto me uh, and then he tells us what those things are you hold that a bit it's your arm time. Um, you can it just for a second yep all right so let's find it just rearrange my are you cold you're right uh, no I'm fine I it will rain because I did bring a jacket but that's I just have a brolly like, you can use mine if you I've want. got a shawl somewhere oh I should have my bag around here it would be would be the thing if I was a uh, more trusting of humanity, maybe. Sure. Right, so uh, you're looking up six reasons why God hates people. <laughs> no, he doesn't hate people, he doesn't well, mention people. Why he hates, yeah. I wouldn't have thought he'd need to tap into such a negative emotion, uh, but he does. But it's not necessarily negative. Hate, let's find out. Hate. Let's, yes, hate. Hate, what about cruelty? Yes. Is that a negative? So he emotion? mentions it in the Psalms. Let's get to the thing I want. Ah, here we go. So I'm going to read from my preferred translation because I like it. Uh, here we go. This doesn't actually say I hate. So this is, they're more literalist with the translations, but let me find it now. Sleep, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm sure ah, it's in there. I believe, I believe yeah. you. So... I just uh, don't believe the text. There are six things which Yahweh hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination unto him. And these are haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness who utters lies, and he who sows discord among his brethren. Quite right. I would say that maybe if we could change the word hate to disapproves of, Sure thing, but that's the okay. Hebrew that was used in okay. the Because hate Proverbs. is a very emotive and negative so emotion. So it's love. You can't have perfect love if you don't have perfect hate. Like there. I don't see hate space. as the opposite of love because I'm monistic. I see that love will be the natural. The absence of love. love would be the natural inclination towards an absolute truth. If you deviation love from your that. child, you would hate the, hate the act of murder against your child. You, you would dis you'd disapprove of it. But disapprove? If you Are you mental? Someone kills your child. You would hate that act. I don't see it. I mean, you know what I mean. No, I would, would I would argue that as a criminal. Disapproval if, if they bring my food without salt. I meant disapproval in I'm trying to pick a word which isn't it's hate. Isn't hate. I understand to, to, how difficult it would be if your child was murdered. Yeah, no, you might feel hate, but I don't what think is then. What's the difference between having hate and feeling hate? Oh, acting on it and encouraging it. God is not smiting anyone at this point. No, he's not. As far as I see, he's saying he's I disapprove. Saying, I hate these things. Well, okay, and I'd argue you could easily just rewrite that as he disapproves and will caution if you against you were a these Hebrew things. Translator, I'd take your word for it, I don't but mean, no one I has. don't mean to be know, literal. Know. You know I'm what I mean? Yeah. You, you might be less blood and thunder if you weren't using that word. Well, I'm, I'm all about Jesus. So I know, me too. I, but this is this is the ex explanation of his character. So we see these are the things yeah, he you, loves. These are the things he values. These are the things he hates. Values these are is the good. Things, yes, values of is good. He values Honesty and integrity, and and you know, like the feeding of the poor and loving your enemies, and then yada yada yada. And da, 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 da. Yah is obviously God's name, yeah. but yeah. So we must we see the character not only of Yahweh in the Old Testament, but we see His faithfulness in the face of 
infidelity of the Israelites. They, he literally sends Moses down again with the tablets and they are building a cow and worshipping it. They know he's just nipped up to see God. Yeah, I know. And they got, like, they're nutters. Like, but God is faithful. And he wipes out 90% of these people. Like, they're enemies, yeah, not the Israelites. No, his own people. He gets Moses no, to he put doesn't. it. Okay. I'm not sure what the percentages I heard 90, but he gets Moses to put a whole load of them to the sword. Yes? The Amicalites? The Midian? They're it's not you, his know. people. They were, no. they were human beings, yeah? But Who they're not travel. his people. Okay, no, his chosen people okay. are the tribes of Israel. Okay, so he doesn't more wipe internal out them. There's so many internal contradictions. There are no contradictions. They're all his creation. However, his Can chosen you understand people. how to an outsider who's trying to approach a religion well, objective? I'd love it if the outsider didn't say he wiped out 90% of the Israelites. Okay, if he didn't, false. if he didn't, he didn't. He definitely, I heard he did, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe wrong. I'm right. He definitely, Moses comes down from Mount Sinai. God definitely gets Moses to then kill some people. About seven, I think, not 90% of them. Like, really? There are a few, but yes. Seven. No, I don't know. There are a few individual uh, stories of people being uh, I thought there was quite alienated. A no, but also, spiritual death is being alienated from the tribes. Actually, well, let's assume it was just seven. Yeah. And I think when we go away and check, we'll find it was more than it's seven. It's no way ninety percent. I okay, tell you that I'm much for free. To concede ninety percent. No. You I, better. I, I'm really, <laughs> I'll. I'll say it's very likely I'm wrong about I'm the Okay, I read the Bible regularly and exegete it. You're Tony and you're not to, a Christian I used anymore. To and I just bulleted on the key point. If that was something that drove you away from Christianity, I'm happy that you're now going to find that you're okay, incorrect I'm about that. Okay, I'm more than happy to discover it wasn't 90, but it doesn't matter in a it way. It does. It's the principle that counts. So let's assume it was only. Oh, it's not the principle that counts. Not from somebody who doesn't have like any objective morality. Is it to philosophy? I, no, I do have objective morality. I think that I think religion is alluding, hopefully, to a genuine objective morality. And how would we discern that uh, the, I, the wishes of this perfectly moral being or system of thought? Well, I think through the prescript, a lot of the prescriptive teachings of Christianity and Islam seem to head in the correct direction. Yeah, I just don't know where you find that in the Quran. I don't well, see it. Well, I, I did try and throw you the five pillars as being. Oh, sorry. Go. Yeah. So Zakat. It's all right, but whilst you've got murder and rape that are being advocated, okay, okay, it's it, not. Assume, Why uh, shouldn't okay, I? Okay, you're asking me for my interpretation. And I'm giving okay. you my free speech opinions okay, on those things. My interpretation, if I speak to a um, Muslim, I'll go, I think that bit Kay just mentioned we should probably get rid of, but let's keep the prescriptive Well, bit I'll give about... you more ammunition for you to yeah, no, try and, and I'm filter happy, I'm happy to take it back there, and they'll argue the same thing, probably. They'll go, but my They won't say this, love Kay. Well, no. I don't know, I thought you and Mohammed would oh, okay. oh, to go to reach. Yeah, I don't know if he loves me. I, he's not commanded to spiritually. I'm Nidja, so yeah, I'm the worst seem, of all creatures. Personally, you seem to get on pretty well. Yeah, yeah, he's, which a, is he's good, a nice guy. Which is good. If I go to them, I'm sure, and I say, I, maybe you should chuck out this bit about hate, <laughs> I think they'll probably go, no, but it says so in my book, and I'll try and say to them, again, baby with the bath water, you've got gold in here, why do you want to baggage it? Like How do you, you find you're getting on with this one-man crusade of trying to get people to, like, sideswipe some of their scripture? I imagine what? not really that profitable. Like, well, no, because if you came to it through, a more cab say, a Kabbalistic tradition or a Buddhist tradition or certain other traditions... I don't like the idea of anatta, like, for Buddhism. I know there's a, an anatta. I think there's probably like, a lot of like. different strains of Buddhism like there are. You picked one. So I think we were annihilate an, a little bit. Yeah. Backtrack yeah. to hell, hell for a minute. Yep. Because we're covering a lot here, and there's a lot to talk about. I'd like to talk about. Yes. Because I put this to the Muslims, the idea of eternal retribution. Yep. They came up with Ali Dawa came up with what to me was an interesting answer I hadn't heard before. Yeah. And then the tape cut, which means unfortunately I think he edited heavily. I That's all right. I, I said that, and you smiled. That's fine. <laughs> I'll have a chat with him about that another time. Sure, I'm sure no, it'll be actually, absolutely true. It means I'd, I'd given him a dilemma, the other was to do with determinism. I think by answering one side of it well, he'd left himself wide open, and the other half I will engage with later. Anyway, hellfire. I'm saying it's infinite punishment for a finite um, transgression. If you believe that sin is a finite transgression. Okay, that's an interesting. That He balanced, okay, I'll tell you how he balanced it. He balanced it by saying, the sinner who God puts in hell forever, God knows that if that person had lived forever, they would have eternally sinned. Yeah? Now, I never heard that. And I've got to say, technically, that does balance it. Yeah? Well, it creates a whole new load of problems. In terms of the New Testament, the first ever thing that Christ said publicly, yeah. um, I guess the first thing he said was mama or something, but the first thing he said publicly was repent. 
character and that is not just to be sorry for that's a metanoia that's a change of heart away from sin yeah. so so I guess the argument of Ali I mean yeah the fact that Christ came with a message of Philos repentance philosophically he did address that point it creates a whole new vipers nest of problems but the thing is God is outside of time my God so he knows the predestination is often a sticking point for people yeah. um, but in terms of human linguistics that's uh, an adequate like response or a good so response so what you might agree with his response uh, God like knows that God knows our hearts before we act but because he's outside of time he can see the end results of our free will and write our names in the book of so lamb right. before time so now you and Ali Dawa are both on the same side against me there you go you have got I something. have argued with Hashim against a pantheist before okay. but you guys have got something in common I hadn't heard that yeah. argument before now I've still... got two feet as well yeah yeah, but your two feet are an adopted. And his are going into You're hell. With the feet, you've chosen this philosophy. And yeah, I've chosen to which way to point them and to walk. Yeah, but not having them, you, you were born with them. Well, I could get there on, on prosthetics, you I guess. You do know what I'm saying. I, I do, know, you know what I'm saying. Do. Okay, you've embraced a particular view that happens, unfortunately, to correspond with his. No, I've got no, I, I've got no problem with agreeing with okay. Muslims. Now, the reason I just that find that we don't agree on very much I at all. I understand. I'm just suggesting you can look at both at the same time. You yeah, yeah, I can take me up a tea. We yeah. could become besties. I didn't say that. I didn't say <laughs> I that. I did, because I'm being facetious. I think that Jesus was here. He might approve of what I'm saying. He tells me to love Ali Dawa even. Right, there you go. So and it's a good job I'm not an advisor to the Lord. I'm so just Jesus a disciple. might slightly agree with what I'm saying just a little bit. He wouldn't say based on this one view of Ali, like, no. He, he loves him even though he is a sinner and he is justifiably condemned to hell at this point. I'm very impressed by the diligence with which he, for example, prays, which is something else Christians but do. But Christ said, do not pray in public like the Pharisees. So he is literally going against what Christ said. Okay, now here I would say... And it's against the park regulations. Okay. <laughs> what, Christ said it's against the park nope, regulations? No, it is against the civilly, it's I against, joking, yeah. I think this again might be where you're taking your book to literally maybe at the time when they were praying in Islam, whenever it was, 500 BC. I didn't say about Muslims, he was talking to Christians. Okay, okay. Oh, what is Jews. It? it could be that you find yourself a time and an environment where praying in private is quite difficult because you just don't have that level of maybe just praying in public is a necessity. You can, I, mean, I understand you could pray in public because you're being ostentatious and showing that's off. That's what he's and arguing he may against. Be drawing attention he's saying to that. God knows your heart. So you might live outwardly pious, but your li your heart is dirty. Okay, like let me digress. So this is a perfect example of where I'd say maybe taking a negative view of something that's written as opposed to the positive. You can take the thing about don't pray in public. Optimism. It say, it's not an ad. It's not a prohibition, but it means in a showy and uh, I get it. just for show. I get it. But you can read that. You can read that text in a couple of ways. I'd read it optimistically as what he's saying is, don't show off your faith. Yeah, don't when be egotistical about it. Yeah. <laughs> Or you could read it negatively as, don't do it in public places, full stop, that's the rules. Yeah, but in because case, Christ always exegetes, or he always gives the statement, he polemicizes the incorrect, then he gives us the correct way. Like he says, go into your closet, where in secret, where your father still sees you, like where God still is aware that you're doing it. So he, he doesn't only say don't do this, he says but do do this. Yeah. Like so there is no maybe he means this. He's he's he never said anything in secret. Every, every parable he says and this is the meaning of. You see, so he's not cryptic. Like no, and there are the Christians like who try and go into this conspiracy like, you know, but it's yeah. No, look, I think Jim Pound. So what brought you out of Christianity, if you don't mind me asking? So what? what was your stumbling block that brought you out of it? Or was it just cultural Christianity? I was Christianity? born into it. I was given the idea of God as basically being what I would call a benign, loving, just, fair. Big beard, basically, sitting on a cloud. Someone uh, who was on our side and thought all souls are equal, all people should be treated equally. Yeah. Yeah, you don't buy the idea all souls are equal. All no, no, souls. no, all people should be treated equally. God's chosen people I'm not saying to know you an inequality. I'm not saying you shouldn't judge people's behaviour. Yeah. I'm saying that all people... But we shouldn't, actually, as Christians, but... Oh, I actually think we should. No, God think. does. We, we, it literally, we're told. Well, we, we, it says, do judge not lest you be judged by the same measure. So if you're happy to be judged equally, like ignorantly, like without seeing into someone's heart, because obviously if I murder someone who's raping a pensioner, like, I don't know, like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's, I mean. yeah, it's just not the act, it's the, what your heart is, uh, 
you know. Doing I think it's an extremely wise statement, judge, not lest you be judged. By the same measure. I yeah. would disagree with you that we shouldn't judge. I think the human condition is inevitable so. that we judge. Oh, yeah, sure. And I think what prescriptive It makes religion, us hypocrites if we don't live perfectly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, no, not perfectly. As long as you aspire to the best possible. You do the best. And then when you you're having a bad day, someone could come along and condemn you. Yeah, but you do exactly. Which it depends what the moral system, the, the civil code is. If for one uh, error, you can have your hands chopped off, like a, you know, in I'm, some. I'm not in favour of that, obviously. No, obviously, but that's why I'm saying that's why it's subjective. If I'm judging you and I'm in a good mood and you're judging me on your off, day, like that's why it's best to leave the judgment. God says vengeance is mine, like as in retribution is belongs to God. So what's the point in judging without a penalty? You know what I mean? I, mean, like, I think it should be... A, just, it makes you just arrogant. You're walking around should, condemning, condemning and thinking I'm so great. Agree. Yeah. But look, judge not lest you be judged, I think is probably the heart of prescriptive religion and it's a very, very insightful statement. So I'm on side with that. I do think my job is to judge and your job is to judge, not this postmodern thing about... Oh, oh might, well, yeah, okay, we're well, agreed. When Anything say, that's anti-postmodern well, Once you start heading fine. into the we should judge, only God should judge, you're, you're heading into that postmodern No direction. way, not in a million years. Well, they years. would argue the same thing. I they don't care what they I've argue, they're opinion. wrong and I'm right. Oh, so you are judging? Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm glad it's not judging. I'm not judging their behaviour. This isn't God judging, no, 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 no. this is K There's no yeah. vengeance for an opinion. I didn't say judgmentally. I didn't oh, say vengeance. I vengefully. said it. Let me, no, 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 listen to what I'm saying. There's the God's law. There's judgment on that. I can, I, I'm not to even ask in my heart who will ascend unto heaven. Like, literally, I'm not, because it brings Christ down again, is what I'm told. What I can do is have discernment about the uh, words and actions of other people. But a judgment denotes or infers that I am, like, standing in a position of authority or superiority. Yeah, I don't mean, I don't mean and it that And that's what way. the Bible admonishes against. And I agree with you. But it does, we are to have discernment, we are to eat. You know, we are to treat people in a certain way, and that involves judgment. They're doing something to us, we judge. Are they an enemy? Are they a brother? How do I, you know, what do I do? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we agree on the judge not lest you be judged. By the same measure. By the same measure. We seem to disagree that human beings shouldn't judge. I think we should. I think it's a very specific uh, definition of judgment. Okay. I should have. Prefaced. I mean, judgment in this. I think I have to evaluate reality. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have to, that's, that's discernment. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I have to show discernment, and then I look to religion and humanities to point me in the prescriptive direction to help me okay, make the best. Okay, let me redefine then. Yeah. Discernment involves assessment of the situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, judgment denotes condemnation or uh, glorification. Perfect. So, so that's what we discern. shouldn't do. We have to discern. Yes, 100%. Okay, and religion, certainly Christianity, I would argue others, gives us prescriptions to help guide the way we discern. Yes. yes. So that we the Holy Spirit and the Bible. Yeah. So our job, our test in life, is to make the best possible choices, yes, within a moral and teleological framework. Yes. Yes. And I would argue an empathic and altruistic framework, yeah? That seems to be what comes through from Christianity. Jesus Altruism seems to be a fan of human beings in general. He doesn't seem Even to be... The, despite the human beings, despite yes. Despite the human beings, he seems to be a fan of human beings in general. Well, he is one also, so, yes. I mean, that helps. We've which, got a man on the inside, as it were. Right. Which, if you believe that God literally created us, which I don't literally believe... Well, no, I but, believe that Jesus created us because I'm Christian. OK, I, yeah. I, I kind of put it down to evolution, but I... Guess, oh, don't start me off. Don't Tony, start at this me late off. stage of the game, come on. Second, we won't do evolution. I've got to check the camera in here. Yeah. Whether or not my consistently just and Where merciful. does that come into ca uh, Kabbalism, like evolutionary? Or do you just kind of pick the bits you so like? Many and, I See, know. Kabbalism was in response to how did I move from Christianity to a wider framework. It was because God seemed to me, I said at the top of the hierarchy, to be basically a, de a decent person. Yeah? A de <laughs> let's put it what in. a compliment. Okay, and a good guy. Yeah. Seemed in the be, extreme level, like to be an extreme of level good guy. Yeah. Yes. And it he is goodness. Seem, and personification. And it seemed to me that he said the truth. You should follow truth. Yes. The truth. Was, he said he is the truth. Right, so you truth should follow is him. Morally virtuous. Yes. Yes. My understanding of truth is it won't contain internal contradictions. Yes. So I'm looking out. For, I found one yesterday. I can't remember. Not in my religion, but just I found. I, I was. If I'm blessed with recollection, because the football was on, and I'd. Uh, been celebrating but it's always the way you have a drink and you're like I've cracked it <laughs> and then you don't write it down so 
So yeah, but um, okay. So no internal contradiction. No internal contradiction. So you, and then that's I only if you agree that the scripture is God breathed, because otherwise it wouldn't denote a, it would denote a filter problem, not a source problem. If you say that the scripture is just the recordings of man who has been in, do you well, know what I, I mean? I take it that the scripture will be the recordings of man through hopefully divine inspiration. I take it that evolution will be what created us, hopefully incorporating a divine opinion? mechanism. Can you give me any, like, do because you have do. any evidence of Darwinian evolution? Yep, just so, so much. Give me one, so I, I pay no, you I, money. No, I, strangely enough, it's, it's a weird one, it's rather like You my thought of it yesterday when you had a drink and now you can't remember. <laughs> no, it's more like, it's like my evidence for pigs not flying, yeah? To me it's so bloody obvious, I'm not sure I can actually cite well, the Well, neither can macrobiologists and no. neither can uh, physicists. No. no. Nobody can give a change of kind. That's okay. what we're looking for. If you take the, I'll place a side bet with you. If you take the top, if you take the no, all the Nobel Prize winning sure. scientists of the 21st century, yep. you might find one of them who would dispute evolution. Now, we're I, in don't, a, I don't accept that. Okay. I tell you, you know that poster that says what, what atheism, yeah. good enough for these idiots, and there's like eight. You know, Einstein and whomever on there. Yeah. Only one of those guys is actually an atheist. For sure. And and they claim to be the fat, like the, you know, uh, what's the word? Believers in evolution. Not all of them. Actually, even Darwin. Einstein was into even Darwin uh, said that the human eye woke him up in cold sweats and yeah. the duckbill platypus. And he said, if you haven't proven this in a hundred years, throw it out. And there is no evidence of a changing kind. That's what, uh, if you go away and come back another week, so uh, an ant turning into a something, not another ant, not a, not a bird being another kind of bird, but a change of genus, of kind. That's yeah. what Darwin argued for, and there is no evidence. I know you say that, Kay, but I know that. once we start moving into the realm of science, well, you, uh, no, neither we're going, of us are scientists. Uh, I, have, well, I have science qualifications. What do you got? Uh, just physics, A-level. Yeah. So, A-level physics? Well, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So, so um, when we're up against, no offence, I mean, it's just I know that when, when reli to me, religion is prescriptive and it's about dealing with values, morals, teleology, meaning, how we believe, how we act and the choices that we make, science is no, about... No, we're just sticking with evolution. Well, you're countering is, what I hold to be scripturally, divinely inspired truth. And you're saying, well, I can't give you any evidence because it's so obvious. No, 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 no. But I'd I, like to, I, no, I, I could argue from the Bible that, okay. that nature is evidence okay. of God. If you, if you wish me, to, I'm more than happy to yes. go away. Yeah. Yeah. All right, brilliant. Come back and, and I'm do gonna an evolution. And I'm going to give you a video plan. of all these top scientists going, and they can't I'm give sure, any I'm evidence. I'm sure, but I think they're probably not top scientists. Well, they're in Yale and Harvard. You see, this is the same thing the Muslims argue. Yale seen, and I've Harvard, not good enough for you. No, yeah, it's they're not in like a. I don't know, hackney no, yeah, polytechnic. Good, you know, the <laughs> cream like, of the crop would probably be Nobel Prize because loads of people go to Yale and Harvard. No, you find me I some... Know, did, where did the Unibon go? Did he go to Yale or Harvard? Uh, I don't well, know. he spent most of his time in the woods, didn't he, hiding? Later on. <laughs> I, think you'll find, I think you'll find there's a fair chunk of people who lost yeah, but the crop he was and also MK Ultra, so I mean, let's not use him. What I mean is you're motivated. People always look for the evidence that will support their pre Yes, their confirmation bias. Yes, confirmation bias. Of course. So but I, I, did, I used to believe in evolution even as a Christian. Oh, that's weird. I even before okay, I became yeah, I was a theistic evolutionist until for I... For what reasons, actually? That's well, because, mean. well, just briefly, I thought that the psalm saying that a thousand years is as one day to the Lord could account for the six days of creation being maybe nice. 600,000 years of evolution. Right. However, like, Genesis, Jesus speaks of Adam as a real historical character. He doesn't speak of any, like, monkeys oh, or missing you literally believe in Adam? I literally believe in Jesus as the truth, yes. I, You'll I, be shocked to hear a no, Christian. No, no, I, like, I like the like in Jesus thing. It's just I don't take no, it Jesus as automatic. Jesus speaks only the truth. If Jesus mentioned Adam as a historical the character, was I can take it to the bank. People. No, God, yes. the Holy Spirit, no. No, yes. Written down on paper. The that put Excellent. The, put the first text Brilliant. Down and it was the Holy Spirit hand. speaking through uh, them. Uh, uh, okay, fine. But the hand that held oh, the yeah, pen. Oh, yeah, 100%. Wrote, that that yes. was a human hand. Yep, the, the, the Ten Jesus. Commandments were written by the finger of God. Okay, Throw it wasn't Jesus' hand, it was a human being's hand. Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is also God, so Jesus was involved in those Old Testament I verses. Before, I, I'm hoping that the text is divinely inspired, but it was transmitted by a human being. So you mean open to error, so no, yeah, so Christians words, believe that, that well, Protestants believe, and so do Catholics to be fair and Orthodox. The Bible in its first manifestation is inerrant, and it's also infallible. Uh, if Protestants believe solely that the Bible is infallible, however, Catholics also believe that the Pope can speak. But this is what's going to sink you guys. And it's I don't think, well, 2,000 years later and 2.2 billion, 
I reckon you're on your own, Tone. Except reality is not a popularity contest. Reality is what matches best hence, truth. Hence Donald Trump got elected. I, I've got no problem with Trump. Truth is really? what. Co- <laughs> Absolutely. I thought it was hyster- I loved it. Hysterical, Every moment. Yes. No, brilliant that he wasn't controlled by any like shadow government. Like it was brilliant to have someone speak in their mind. We're not focusing this conversation. Yeah. That was my fault. But the truth is what correlates most closely to reality. So I yeah. don't believe that I have a skewed view of reality. I believe that. I but see things how they are. Every, well, I, I assume the Bible's got it spot on when it went, look first to the moment. But in, in the your first pages, it failed to uh, mention evolution and lied no, 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 and no, said no. that no, Yahweh breathed I'm, into Adam's nose. No, I've just gone the, the sheer weight of evidence and common sense. When you, right, I'm going to stop you there and I'm going to say, take that up in a couple of weeks when you bring me one iota okay, of evidence. We won't do evolution. So back to health. We're on Hellfire. I'm saying it's disproportionate. I'm looking for consistency because the Bible's I've cheap. tried giving you my opinion twice on that. God's good and be truthful. So I'm going Can, for truth. Okay, if, if I sin against you, yeah. ultimately I'm sinning against God, but let's go from a non-Christian viewpoint. If I just jump up and just chin you, right, yeah. you have the absolute right to be hurt, outraged, angry, uh, seeking retribution or judgment. It's you, I've sinned against you or I've committed a crime against you. Yeah. So now you should have some uh, say so or recourse to you know deeming how if, it, if it's your two-year-old child who punches you in the face you can have a different reaction to me doing it sure but the sin is against, or the crime is against you so the sin is against god ultimately even if i do that to you so my argument is if god deems that hell is he's perfectly just we kind of well, agreed that well, that is the christian worldview god is I know just they, i know they profess that but i'm saying when i look no, at you it, agreed with it earlier no, I'm you saying, said god is benign he is just he is no, something I'm saying, he is something i'm saying that because i'm not taking the text absolutely literally syllable for syllable Sure. I'm inferring from it the, its essence. Well, I'm it does the, also say I'm that God for the is gold just. amidst the thing. Yeah? Brilliant. Now, am I, no, no, am you I, have, I haven't finished my point, though. God. So the sin is against God. God is the moral arbiter. He is the creator of uh, everything morality, goodness, like all these things stem from Him. Uh, and if He, and if you as the victim, decides that actually I think uh, Kay should be arrested. Like that's your choice to make. I have no say so at this point because I've given up my rights to a decision making process by punching you, right? Uh-huh. So therefore God has the ultimate authority to judge. And therefore if he deems as the perfectly just being that he is that hell is an appropriate punishment, then it must be. If God said there's a square circle, it would, no, no, no. If God, I'm, sorry, I'm not, well, no, I'm not, I'm not answering your K at the moment. I'm going to continue. If God speaks, it becomes true because he is more than true. But then by that logic, philosophically, anything you Go say... Go with critical reasoning. Anything, Show me where I'm, my I'm premises are pro- false. Your, your proposition is false because you've created a, an argumentative platform by which anything you say must be true no. because it comes from an infallible source. Full stop. Yes. Uh, that's your but at least argument. give me where... Yeah, but that's a valid argument. No, it's not because anyone... Okay, this is my, well, this then, my then, critical then reasoning. The, the Number one can premise. The they can, and they're wrong. Doesn't say their argument isn't valid. Okay, but how are we going to? We're take, talking about critical reasoning. No, sorry, truth how, and validity are, are not take, the same thing. How are we going to take these ideas and actually weigh we're them critically? We're not. Critically? Is oh, the okay. short answer? I thought that's what we're doing. Oh, we can, no, no, we, uh, we can evaluate them, I'm but I won't. To. Yes, I understand that, but I don't hold uh, your opinion to be as valid as uh, like thousands of years of uh, no, Christian your theology. Argument, your argument just went because God is absolutely. I know what my argument was. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to point yeah, you yeah, back yeah, if I've understood yeah. you correctly. Yeah. Go. Because God is absolutely just, absolutely all-powerful, absolutely all-knowing, omniscient, omnipresent, blah, 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 all that stuff. I didn't actually go there. Okay, yeah, that I'm, is fine. I'm assuming fine. you would go there, yep. yeah? Because of that, whatever he does must be okay. All right, let's, let me reverse. Yeah. Let me give you a counterfactual to that then, a counterexample. God is perfectly just. Uh, this is my premises. God is perfectly just. If God does something that is less than just, he cannot be perfectly just. So there's my two premises and my conclusion. Agreed. Yeah. So Agreed. then you agree with the counter example, so therefore yeah, you do. philosophically agree with the example also. No, I don't. Well, he I cannot be perfectly just if he does something unjust. Yeah, therefore, by exten- you're, you're so by extension, his actions are just for him to remain the perfectly just God that he is. Yeah, I know. I know there that. You go, then. You, it's just because it goes you really against your argument. What you just said? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I just did like a, val- a validity test on I'm it. Le- I'm left with a dichotomy here before we've got I'm two... I'm going to check pre- the camera, do excuse me, yeah, sorry, sure. I'll come back. Six minutes. Six minutes? Yeah, until someone has to press the button or we wrap it up. Go on. 
Okay. Um, we've got two premises, which is that God is absolutely just. just. And we've got that if he did anything less than just, he wouldn't he, be he God. He wouldn't be, no, no, not that he wouldn't be God, that he wouldn't be perfect. He wouldn't just. be perfect. And from those two premises, you're drawing the syllogistic conclusion. Therefore, whatever he says must be just. Well, no, whatever he says must be true, and his judgment true. must be just. That's true, and his judgment must be just. Yes. And inevitably, you take it as a matter of fact that what he said is exactly to the last letter written in that book. And no, no, I don't. Correct. No, I don't. I just said to you the first manifestation of the Bible is inerrant. Okay. Christians don't believe that translations, okay. um, that you know, they're, they're only one iteration away, but there okay. are di various different English translations okay. that can. I'll pull it back a bit. That yeah. There is a translation of the Bible that you can that hypothetically is the first hand one. me, yes. which well, is yes. de facto accurate. Yes. Yes, and you've interpreted if you it accurately Hebrew, yes. as well. Yes. But this is your, yeah, so right, so your definition of interpretation. If you read words that say, do not do this. I get you, but there's unfortunately, no interpretation given that there are so many different, you've used the argument before of a million people saying it must have some weight. No, I, I use the opposite. I say it doesn't matter. If a million people say something, that believe something that's wrong, it's still just as wrong. I think, I think earlier on, I think you'll find on your own I never, tape, I don't you appeal to consensus. Oh, no, I said there are 2.2 billion Christians. Thank you. Yeah, Thank no, but you. I wasn't using that as an appeal to, uh, like, a consensus or authority. Really? Yes, really, because Sorry. the Bible is infallible whether all those Christians wandered off tomorrow. Yeah, that's clear then. She wasn't using it Yeah, as no, I, I really okay. wasn't. Okay, I think, fine. If you weren't, you weren't, because I yeah. wouldn't either. As I said, I don't think reality yeah, is no, a popularity Yeah, no, I often argue the, the opposite, exactly. But the very fact that within Christianity, human beings are fallible enough to create multiple different interpretations of the text, sure. yes? at least means that it's possible, but unless you may be... What about a fallacious um, argument, quotation, though? What about if these subsections of society are using, a, like, have a, a, an error of reasoning, yeah. that, so it's possible to get a verse out that says this and a verse out that says and if they make a misstep in their logic... You're right. It's not valid at the end, but they, it may sound good, For you sure. know? Look, Kate, yeah. you seem really great. And light, your life's working, Jesus and thinks I'm to die user, for. <laughs> and a whole load of good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it is possible that you have just interpreted the only correct text in the exact optimal fashion. But given that that very text would tell you to be aware of the moat in your own eye, and you're already aware of confirmation bias, isn't there one percent of doubt and flexibility within your framework of thought, or have you simply absolutely made your mind? Okay. There's two things. It's not me correctly interpreting. Christians are, uh, are taught, and I believe, that the Holy Spirit allows me discernment and also allows me some room for my own interpretation to then convict me uh, as to the right way. So any like uh, any truth that I'm able to uh, show from the Bible is by is not of myself. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Um, also, I would suggest to you that it's not massively fruitful if your argument depends on finding doubt in people who have faith because obviously you know their faith can you can have days where you're just like oh really like I've got to argue this again but yeah if you're looking for commonality faith is a commonality but faith denotes uh, yeah it can wane and it can wax but I believe that the inerrance, inerrancy means what it says on the tin you know like uh, infallibility I know, I know you do I'm, I think yeah. what oh, well, I'm, linguistically uh, what I'm aiming it does. to do I think is introduce enough doubt that it creates get behind the ability, me Satan no that, it, no that it creates enough room for growth because when something is completely written if so, I could show you my life change. prior to Christ you would see the growth no, that's I, no, I get this is a bit, I totally get the impression that for you and a lot of people their religion works and ultimately that's the test of the thing yeah? definitely if it's not if Have there's seen, no edification then it's do you know uh, the comedian redundant. Mark Maron he does a, so. If you go on YouTube, he does a very good three-minute skit on atheists and how they're the most depressing people on the planet. Because what's well, you could it just like look at Ricky Gervais atheist... for that, though, Chucky. <laughs> well, he says, well, imagine the scene when an atheist manages to persuade somebody who wasn't I know, it's like, yeah, you're because, just going to yeah, die exactly. and nothing's going to happen either. Yeah, and it's really funny. <laughs> he himself is an agnostic, but he says, nonetheless... Agnosticism is much more, I think, um, what's the word? like a more of a reasonable position yeah. uh, than outright atheism because hard atheism is almost impossible to prove anyway so you're on an yeah. uphill yeah. you know he says his point is that there aren't any atheist soup kitchens you know <laughs> exactly so, but then atheists would argue they're all ours because they're all we're all like doomed or whatever. indeed what yeah. i'm looking for then is enough doubt because i think if you know something for certain 
you don't actually need faith. One of the things about faith is, and you see this in Jesus' life, unseen. there are moments when his faith is tested. If you, if you know for certain, there is no struggle. And I've said this to the... Um, perfect love, love perfect love casts out fear perfectly and doubt comes from fear so if you have a faith and then you are introduced to a little bit of doubt and it manages to stick it's because you secretly fear or openly fear that what you held as the truth prior yeah. has now been shaken so that's the interpretations of the bible and we don't have to jesus is already critiquing or, or exegeting on the old testament for i'm us. looking for a metaphysically consistent one i'm doing one metaphysics which... at the moment i will get Good. back then to we're you. both on the same page so yes. i want it to be metaphysically consistent in other words i want it to tally with the laws of physics because they seem unavoidable and because the i'm laws not of an metaphysics. expert in that area well physics yeah. is physics no plus. metaphysics is no it's not metaphysics is called metaphysics because they filed it just after physics metaphysics by Literally, yeah, that's by it. Aristotle. Yeah, yeah, it's but I mean, ontological stuff. It's not. Okay, but that's physics. a coincidence of how the it's thing got laid. It's not as in how do things change. It's what is change. I know. That's okay, it. We so, agree. We know. Yeah. Aristotle. The book came afterwards, hence the name. Yeah. But in terms of the area it deals with, it's, oh, it's more. I would say it's higher-minded, as it were, okay. than physics. The, the root of my thinking is I buy the Cartesian divide. You know the Cartesian divide? It's a flash way of saying. When I'm going to deal with all of this chaos, I'll start by breaking things down into subjects and objects. Yeah, and we never get anywhere, basically. Right, yeah, we've got, we've got to work out how you slice the cake first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got a, de okay. degree, a, a degree of definition of terms, etc. Right. So pick good core terms when you make your first oh, slices, definitely. right? Yep. And the best core definition I can find is subject and object. As far as I can see, religion effectively deals with subjects, the condition of being a subject, and all of the things which come with being a subject, which is morals, beauty, goodness, So you say they're all subjective meaning. as well? No, I'm saying that we are subjects. We oh, sure. are, yeah? yeah. So We're subject to lots of different influences and philosophies. Well, no, I mean and... we have a property of consciousness, right? Which yeah. is something science Oh, we're not just with. innate objects, yes. yes yeah, yes. consciousness to me is the big mystery. Consciousness is what I think religion is allu alluding to. The the condition and dilemma of being an object which I definitely have. In space am, and time without any anchor and, with, and yeah. with subjective emotions and thoughts and feelings. Yeah. How do I navigate through life as an object which is also a subject, yeah? Being an object makes me very fragile and I think this is a tragedy of the human condition which Christ is aware of, Christianity is aware of, is we, we wax, we wane, we're not really very powerful in the grand scheme of things and we're like infinite transcendent beings trapped in finite moral coils, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so that general model works for me. And if you're going to feed into that model, breaking the universe down into subjects and objects at the outset seems like a good idea. At that level, I then go, science's job is to do with the objects, yeah? Science isn't going to teach you how to live. Science, isn't science going to teach you right is from amoral, right. so it's pretty exactly. redundant in terms of theological discussions. Yeah, exactly, but it deals with objects and facts It also doesn't purport objects. to be the truth, because that's a philosophical claim. If you say science can teach you, uh, can attain truth, yeah. that's a non-replicable and non-observable yeah. uh, statement. Like, you can't show that in a scientifically approvable method. It's a claim of philosophy. And also, it can't actually do that because it, it only ever requires one denigration of a theory to, for it to be... Science is not looking to uh, give, like, confirmation bias. It's looking to take down the last theory, yeah. like, to disprove. Yeah. So but, it's, it doesn't claim to be the truth in the, the same Muslims way that... You and the would interpret that as being... Please seen. don't keep lumping me in with the Muslims. I have to focus on... You don't have to. Okay. You, don't, you have a faith in a, okay. in a with, system of belief that is other than with Islam respect, or Christianity. With respect, far as I'm trying to communicate my perspective yeah. to your camera, with your permission... You can just say me or Christianity. No, you don't, I, th I don't no, need I, no, to I know about Islam. I, I know too much I about it. <laughs> I think it's relevant to my perspective if you yeah. want to give my perspective yeah. that much airtime. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, but I think it's interesting that yeah, there are these areas of overlap. Yeah. That both of you would say, no, I think it's a bloody point. Right? So sorry. Which happens, that's what um, we're called. No, um, uh, object and subject. Um, object and subject. Yeah, I'm arguing that science deals with objects and it deals with what we'll call facts, okay? In other words, science doesn't deal with morality. Not morality, it but it's beauty. subjective. 
it doesn't deal with teleology, it doesn't deal with any of the things we actually care about. Yeah? It's subjectively interpreted, like fingerprint evidence in a, in a courtroom yeah. uh, is now basically redundant because it takes the subjective opinion of an expert yeah. to attest to the such and such. It does, but don't confuse subjectivity with a subject. I think a subject is... And you said subjective, objective just I, now. I know, yeah. and everyone, when you use the word subject, they think you mean subjective. No, but you did say subjective is I my know, point. I know, it's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. But what I mean is, I think... The, yeah, the, some people, do, when they hear subjective... <laughs> I think I am a subject, that's an ontological fact, and I think if I'm a soul, it exists at that level. I'm a consciousness, I'm a transcendent phenomenon and of consciousness. And you're also an object yeah. in space and time. But I'm an object, so are you also, yeah, yeah, yeah. an ontological oh, I'm not, subject. So an yeah, we're both subjects, we experience each other as objects, and we experience each other phenomenologically, and we do that subjectively. Yes. Yep. So my subjective perspective of you as an object is a distorted perspective. My job is to try and get it as accurate as possible. Although I'll never objectify, quite frankly. Like, yeah, just, yeah. I'll never be able to know you and be you fully because I'd have to almost be you to do that. I have to be inside yeah. you as a subject, the subject that you are. But, but my me, worldview believes that the only one who can know my heart and mind as it were is God. Right. So I, I also disagree that anyone can truly, even subjectively or objectively, know, like feel my feelings or know, yeah. For sure. I think I'm kind of buying into... And that's where psychology plays a great part in uh, like trying to work out the actions and the motivations of other people. And polemics as well. Like, to have to argue... And Jesus did it also. You have to argue against something, unfortunately, in order to present the truth. If someone thinks... Like Islam, for example, Muslims often tell me, but we love Jesus. But I have well, to I tell them... They, mean, but I, they may mean it, but I have to tell them that the Jesus as portrayed in their scripture is not the true Jesus. Because he has different I, miracles, different sayings, a different I, death, a different I, I, birth. Again, clearly, you can see where you differ, but you can see that at least they're cutting him some slack. It's better oh, than sure, that. that's nice of them. I don't even hear Buddhists, I hear nobody. Atheists, agnostics, no one ever says, Jesus, who that wrong and Oh! What a character. No, I agree. Like they I go, agree. he's a great Look, moral Jesus teacher. Jesus seems to be exemplify the human condition. It's almost like he's God in the flesh. I know what you mean. <laughs> no, if I had to pick a religion, I would. If I you had... have to pick a religion now, no, I'm telling you. No, I don't, because I think... <laughs> I'm going to... Because I think... Anyway, hang on. Objects. Science deals with objects and facts about objects, but facts, as Nietzsche would have said, they're dead don't things. Don't care about your feelings? Oh, that's Ben Shapiro. Is that Sorry. Ben Shapiro? Ben, no, facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah. No, I'm doing Nietzsche, right? Yeah, Nietzsche yeah. would have said, Nietzsche would have drawn a clear distinction between truth and facts, okay? Science deals with facts. Facts are dead things, yeah? They're sure. just there. Two plus two equals four, so what? It doesn't mean anything, yeah? Yeah, imagine, well, that's an abstract, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Imagine, yeah, yeah. in other words, on the seven-day train of creation, imagine what the universe looked like before life turned up. Yeah, before the moon and the sun turned up. Well, imagine it when the moon and the sun turned up, but before any life landed, yeah? Sure. At that point, you had a universe consisting entirely of facts, okay? There were forces... But there was no human... If there was no... Philosophically no. speaking, without God in the picture, God without assuming... any human mind to interpret the facts, they are not actually... They are just uh, the status quo, maybe, well, exactly. but there's no fact. That's because no, a fact that's... is a statement of truth. That is verifiable kind of thing. I get where we're, no, we're, yeah. we're on the same page, yeah. but it's, I'm trying to get the language in a way we can agree here because yeah. I'm using words in an unfortunately ambiguous historical way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to take the word fact to mean pertaining to objects and energy. Yeah. So the sun, the moon, the forces of nature, and truth pertains to what happens when you bring life in, and truth brings with it value, meaning, morality, and all the good stuff that's important. That is what we are. Yep. So until humans landed, there was no truth, but there were facts. Oh, there I see what no, you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yes, I'm yes, trying yes, to. Yes, so yes. it's yep. that x y axis. Yep. Yep. So if religion is there to pursue the truth, which is about morality, ethics, teleology, meaning, etc., yep. the dilemma of the human condition, it is there to be informed with the raw facts which science brings to the table. Yes. Science can never address the meaningful stuff. But I would be very, very foolish. It to does try to nowadays. I know unfortunately. When, it, when it does, but or I think, it's been like bastardised by some political yeah, narratives. I would then say to the scientists, that's not your job. Your job is to provide me so with the core. So what climate plan. scientists? Yeah, what? <laughs> so it's a bit. Hang on, it's a bit like this. It's a bit like you want to be the best driver you can be. Yeah. You go to the science to build you the car. Yeah. But be, having a, good, a great racing car won't make you a great driver, yeah? Oh, exactly. Driving, yeah. Yeah. so you want, if you want to learn the skill of driving... You can own a brilliant piano and not be able to play a note, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So you go to religion or maybe the humanities to teach you how to drive better. Please. In my <laughs> thinking, OK? Yeah. Have you been to uni lately? I don't mean that kind yeah, of humanities. Yeah, exactly. I just mean broad stroke, yeah. OK? Uh, humanism, yeah? yeah. yeah? 
So you go to those schools, religion and humanism and so on, and philosophy, to teach you how to drive the best you can. And you go to science to provide you with the facts. Now, if you try and drive your car... You still haven't been to a driving instructor yet. Well, no, the driving instructor would be religion and so on, Christianity, you. right? Yeah. I'm over-egging the metaphor, but you yeah. get my gist. Right, now, if you want to drive the car as well as possible, you don't have to learn how it works. Oh, no, for sure. You don't have to be a mechanic. But I put to... it to you that if you really want to be the best driver, ideally it will probably help if you've got a sense yeah, of... Yeah, if you know that that clunk means yeah. Uh, yeah. stop driving immediately. Yeah, if you've got a sense of gear ratios and a whole lot of stuff, I don't. But if you've got that, that will probably help you to achieve your goal of driving. This is why well. I walk everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Which is why my back's fine. And equally, if you want to drive the car as well as you can, you will be very foolish to misunderstand the facts. Yeah, about, things like filling yeah. up the water don't and checking the Don't think radiator. this car's got five gears when it's got ten. Yep. Okay? So pay due lip service to the sciences and the engineers who are handing you the facts you've got to learn to drive well, and don't confuse those two skills. Yep, yep. Good. Therefore, I feel I have to work within the parameters of the facts that science seems to give me in good faith, on the understanding that they're not giving me moral or teleological prescription, sure. and then I've got to translate them into prescriptive format, to which I look to religion. You do. Okay, yep. I would. Ask, I'm going to wrap up now, actually, because my uh, I'm going numb. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's right. So I would just say that um, you can go to purely factual like sources, what you believe to be factual, and um, because science is ever changing, obviously, like you know, you it's reference like, the it's earlier growing. Copernicus. It's not and, changing. It's no, it is changing. It is, but the nature of its change... Growth like implies change. It's in, yeah, but change. No, no, if something is right and it's right and it's right and then it's wrong, yeah. it's changed. Yes, it is, but... Let's when, not argue when, when I'm doing my speech now. Like, let's do me... My proposition is... I apologise. No, 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 it's all right. No, 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 I don't mean it like that. I just mean that science does change its wholesale opinion on something. And sometimes, unfortunately, that's politically or religiously motivated. I mean religion in terms of this cult of wokeness or the left-wing narrative, whatever you want to, yeah. like, you know. So, unfortunately, science is now like a populist pastime. You've got Bill Nye, the science guy, who's not even a scientist. I'll like, stand up if you want. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's fine. So, I would say that if you, you know, get, get the facts as you can, but yeah. then, of course, being a subjective like human, you don't necessarily yourself have to take on the burden of interpret, sole interpreter of. I mean, of your reality. Yes, you you must certainly like in, what integratively. I must do is a, is a develop, don't just wholesale the... like swallow something from somebody no, else. But, but what I was, sorry, my argument was, if you see that two thousand years of Christianity have consistently not the actions of Christians, but the theolo theologians and the you know whatever have reasonably interpreted, even if you can put addition to what Christ said or say, oh, well, actually, I think he's got a deeper level of meaning. He certainly does. But if you thought that they've gone out and practiced this love from the second century, but if it's there and it's morally, in your opinion, superior to verses such as fight the unbeliever, slay them where you find them, then you can easily throw out some bath water and whittle down your way to yeah. what you consider to be a, an excellent mode of living. Because you might actually go on into your 80s and go, oh, do you know what? Like, uh, the bath was missing and the baby's grown up now. Yeah. Thing. I, look, I embrace the, what's good about Christianity. I think it's an excellent religion in principle. I think judging the text by the way some of its pseudo-advocates behave is oh. absolutely not the way to do it. <laughs> but it goodness. really annoys me when people do yeah. that, and I like that you defend that and you, you, you understand the difference between the two. But I think then you've got to apply the same, for example, with Islam. I do. And you've got to look at the text and not the advocates. Yeah? yeah, I don't think everybody's an extremist. And I think the extremist tag is a bit unhelpful because if you're just going by the scripture, you're not extreme. You're just a literalist. Yeah, like you're a literalist, which yeah. I think might be the problem. I think that is the literal interpretation. If I were an, a, a, an adherent or uh, whatever, I would be forced to conclude that, yeah, it does say that. And it's unchanging and Allah hasn't abrogated it. But that's another time. Yes, so and, anyway. I'm not going to get you on the health thing, though. Because I wanted are, to go back to I'm them another time. I need to stop this camera for at least 10 whole minutes because I have a nicotine habit. I have uh, some <laughs> like some prayers. That, I was hoping no, I, I just could take your response on the Hellfire thing because they've addressed it and then I could go back to them again. My response is that my actual like sound bite is this. If you find that it is an unfair... Um, retribution is because you do not understand the seriousness and the gravity from God's perspective of sin. That's my answer. That's your sound.
that's my we whole answer. Pick up on that another point at some point. Amen, definitely. Right, I'll chat with Bob as well. Excellent. Well, oh, good. Put some earplugs in right now, and because uh, there'll be a crowd, so he has to you shout. And Bob are... No, we are. We're on this, like we're on the same side. But I'm saying he's he projects his voice for the crowd. Oh, so no, you he's to... mastered. He and Mohammed Hijab, they've mastered the orator thing. Yeah, so did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Right, everybody. I didn't say that. You didn't. I'm gonna to have to say my goodbye sitting down because if I stand up, you'll be like, I said, oh, midriff. But, um, yep. Yeah, thanks very Thank much, Tony, and we'll speak again soon. God bless. Bye bye.